This is episode 260 of the Gold Squadron Podcast. I'm your host, Dio Morales, and today I'm joined by Marcel. You died, you died, you died. Enemy felt. Manzana. Some of y'all get that. That's been consuming my 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 free time for the last, I don't know how long. I, I think you missed a couple you dieds in there. <laughs> I don't know. Huh? I have no it's, clue what you're It's referring. Elden Ring. It's yeah. like a new <laughs> video game that everyone's playing, including myself. And basically, the game is you die over and over and over again until you figure something out. And then you beat that monster just to die the next one like 20 times. Okay, cool. I mean, yeah. apparently not everybody because I'm not playing it. But I also don't have time for a video game. But anyway... The will. Question, can we get Dio to play Elden Ring for the st- for a stream one time? <laughs> will, uh, how much camera movement is there? Because I so much. It's significant. It's that person. I, I will probably that I have to do that s- stream without a camera because Dion's going to play the challenge. No rolling, uh, Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> will Sonari, Yes, Haywood. Man, it's been a long time coming, boys. Scenarios, yes. And Ryan, I can now breathe a sigh of relief. Stanizuski. Yes, they have confirmed. Cad Bane is, in fact, in the Rogue class, in the Separatist faction. We weren't ever 100% sure on that until we had spoils from today. That's right. Confirmed. We're going to go over those cards here in a minute. But before we do that, I want to give a shout out to our GSP patrons. You guys are the ones that make all the content happen. And if you guys uh, paid attention on Patreon and on Discord last week, you know that I was scrambling uh, because... Things happen, and unfortunately, deadlines were not met uh, that I that were out of my control. But I had a backup solution. I was hoping to hold on to this for a while, but uh, we we are going to go ahead and uh, and use it. And actually, I sent the pictures for our upcoming next two waves now to um, to Will, Marcel, and Ryan. And we'll go ahead and and do some quick spoilers here because if you guys remember from the original uh, Patreon waves, we have been uh, or in the last few Patreon waves, we've been doing uh, by faction and we've had five cards because the artist gave me a deal because we were doing like a set of five and it didn't have any backgrounds or anything like that. So it was a little uh, less time consuming. So I was able to get a deal. But normally we did three cards. Uh, three pilots in every wave so we're going to go back to that here for a little bit until we get our um get our faction series back going but i wanted to share with you the pieces of art uh these currently do have a um a watermark on them but for those of you who are watching be able to get a quick peek here so we have uh nora wexley in the y-wing we got wampa in the tie fighter Wedge Antilles in the X-Wing. Derek Clivian in the A-Wing. Commandant Gorin in that TIE Interceptor. And Night Beast in the TIE Fighter. Now, all of this art comes to you from Corey Heald. He was the artist that worked on our backdrop. Uh, if you guys remember that for Adepticon, if you guys saw a picture of that, all of these are scenes from that battle. Uh, and what he did is this is all it's a um, it's a, a 3D design. And basically we went in and we we found awesome shots within that battle scene and are turning them into pilot cards. Dion, are you working on other factions for these? Maybe. But that's the future. For now, this is going to be quarter two and quarter three. We're going to get everything put in there. But I'm uh, I'm super excited for it. They, they look really good. I know it looks kind of weird because I have a watermark on there. But, you know, I don't want people stealing your, you know, your, your guys' card images. I want to make sure things are uh, on the up and up for all you guys, right? 
So, um, I figured today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a bunch of the custom scenarios that people sent us. But first, since we got new information, let's go ahead and check out what happened with the Rogue class. What is the news? We got a new pilot and a new card revealed. So, let's go ahead and go there. Rogue class Starfighter. Uh, when is this set to release? Do we have a date? I think it's the last Friday in May. Last Friday. Soon. Memorial Day weekend. So soon. All right. So that's a du that double pack is coming out. And we'll hit that one later. We'll go in order here. We'll start with Cad Bane in that rogue class. Starfighter. Ryan, you were worried about it. I'll give you the honors. Here we go. What's that ability on Cad Bane? Well, first, he needs no introduction. Um, True. But during the engage, so this is, clarify, this is a different ability than his scum version. But during the engagement phase, after another ship at range 0 to 3 is destroyed, you may spend one charge, which he has one charge, and it recurs each turn, to perform an action even while stressed. So any ship at range 0 to 3 of him, which could literally be any ship on the board in most cases, um, that dies, whether it's friend or foe. So he can get an action even while stressed. Um... Still I-4, same stat line with the two attack, two agility, five hull, two shields, and the same action bar as the scum version. Um, with that ability, I definitely like the idea of, as long as it has a mod slot, equipping engine upgrade to the ship mm -hmm. uh, to upgrade that red boost to, uh, not upgrade, but add a white boost, technically, just to offer uh, the chance so that if I were to do, say, the linked actions that's like a focus barrel roll or an evade barrel roll um, that I would have an action other than just target lock or one of the evades or focus whichever one I didn't do to reposition because this ship does not have a native white barrel roll. It only gets the barrel from linking, whereas the boost can upgrade it with engine upgrade. That's right. That's right. Um, and that is, I do want to, like you said, emphasize it's any ship on the board that goes kaboom. I saw a lot of talk in our Discord earlier with a lot of people assuming that it was friendly ship. It was like, no, 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 no. Any ship. Any ship. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. Of course, this also has that dead to rights ability. Um, initial thoughts on the ability, Marcel? I think it's great. I think uh, we'll talk about the title a little bit later, uh, which pairs up with this really well, uh, Count Dooku style. But um, yeah, just the 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 ability to. I mean, when things die, so you can if you if anything dies, you can take an action. So I don't know what else to can, say about it. Now, can I, well, I think can one I of the things that would question? be. Yeah, uh, just can you link the free action? Why not? I don't know. Yep, because I, uh, I feel link, like you should be able to. Linked actions, the rules are simply when you perform an action, you can do other things. There are specific cards that say you may not perform any other actions. Like those words mm -hmm. do exist, but that doesn't sure. exist. I think in sensors or something like that. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. sorry, Marcel. Go ahead about uh -huh. the ability. Yeah, I think the, um, if I'm not mistaken, the title will give it some options, uh, uh, which we'll get into. Uh, but also, if I, is the, the title also gives it uh, a crew member, I believe? Mm -hmm. the yeah, crew, we can go. Yeah, yeah well, let's, let's just, let's just segue. Now because because there yeah, are some yeah. things that work with this ability. So. Yeah, so it gives it a crew and a bomb. Uh, and a red cloak. A red cloak. So that itself is pretty good. That you know, you, if you kill something and you go up front, uh, you load it out with something heavy, maybe like an advanced proton torpedo. You try to destroy something and then cloak right after killing it. But the other thing that I was looking at with the crew is you can get some type of coordinator out there, and then you become an engagement phase coordinator. Um, you're either using that, or there's that there's that elite pilot talent, or it's not a, what are they called now? Squad leader. Yeah, but squad yeah, it's leader. a talent. There's there yeah, there's these, the talent squad leader. It's a red one, but you know a red coordinate during, um, 
engagement phase is pretty good, especially if somebody gets killed and they're, let's say, the same initiative that they got killed on. So just something like that. But do you know There's... a separatist who has white coordinate added to the action bar? Is it Palpatine? Nope. That's oh. that's technically that's purple coordinate. Purple. Still pretty good. Oh. Uh, pre Vizsla that came in the Pride of Mandalore pack or the Gauntlet. What are the two? Uh, oh. The pre Vizsla crew has a lot of words that deals with the, uh, the the commandos, but at baseline you can add a white coordinate. <laughs> to the it's part. like yeah, 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 yeah. White coordinate. Yeah, Ooh, that's, that's with a uh, <laughs> with a uh, a crew member, you could put gonk on the ship and kill a ship and then get a shield back. Yeah. You could also just, you know, our force crew will be fully operational when the ship arrives. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Mm. Yeah, so it's a really good ability. It's, uh, and especially because it's not your ship it's or an enemy ship it's any ship so it would work uh, really well with grievous crew if you weren't already taking grievous pilot yeah uh, i mean do you need both probably, you probably you're have. never not gonna <laughs> take Grievous. <laughs> right now the way the current points sit grievous is a great buy 100 percent Alrighty, and then additionally, they spoiled a upgrade card for us, which I think tells us that this thing probably has two cannon slots because they're showing us a double cannon card. What do we got here, Will? Well, well at least one of the pilots will have double cannon. Right. Uh, but this is the Proton Cannons double cannon slot upgrade. It is a bullseye weapon, um, range two to three, that has a four dice attack. Uh, very similar to the heavy laser cannon with very notable differences. Uh, the first one being that you can only shoot this every other round. It has two total charges, one recurring, and you must spend both charges to shoot it. Uh, in addition to that though, you can change one eyeball or hit result to a crit result. So, uh, no, not only do you get this kind of uh, malice type uh, conversion, the eyeball to a crit, uh, it does rock four attack dice as well. Uh, that is the equivalent to a proton torpedo, uh, as the name suggests. Uh, but the bullseye, though, and assuming on this platform, this might be your only secondary weapon, uh, leaving you with just bombs and uh, your two primary attack. Uh, that is what uh, concerns me. I think it's a great weapon, but bullseyes, though, at I-4, might not always yeah, work out. Bullseye, I-4, but with, um, well, a couple of things. One of them is you're getting either large bases or a higher number of ships. There is also a higher number of initiative threes and, and lower, just with objectives in the current meta. And then you compound that enough? with, I think so. I mean, I think most name pilots are four or five these no. days. Even though you're getting a lot of threes and, um, you know, especially Possibly. like the filler ones. It may, even like Ahsoka is a three, uh, even some of the main ones, Barris is a four. I mean, there, there's, there's, there's plenty that you're going to be able to line up. The, the question is, are you willing to hedge your bets on an every other turn proton cannon like this versus sync laser cannon, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. you just or an ion basically, cannon, maybe. Basically seven points to give yourself a three die attack at range two and three, just, you know, not the four dice at range one. Uh, or shoot now, even auto blaster, right? Like, yeah, if you, yeah. you want to try to line up bullseyes. Um, one thing that is uh, interesting that was accidentally leaked in the original points that first came out for this new point structure, Proton Cannon was on that list for three points. Because originally I was like, this just seems like a worse heavy laser cannon. Granted, you have the soft mod that you get, and you can do crits. Wait, you said um, worse heavy laser cannon? 
Yeah. Worse because how, it, how is you worse? can't shoot. You, you can't, can't shoot, shoot every, every round. Turn. You can't shoot every turn, turn, but, but, but you don't have bullseyes every round. It's it usually no, I, yeah, so I get you, it. you take it when you can, and this gives you a soft focus plus the potential for crits, and on a ship that already has a bullseye ability. Um, I mean, if if, if any oh, of that dead right the stuff, devastating. Yeah, so yeah, no, right with this. I mean, really it's, it's going to hurt, yeah. But I don't know if I hedge my bets on that versus just the consistency of sync laser cannon. I would. <laughs> I know you would. You like more dice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now one of the things that we could talk about here as well is this is probably going to be able to be equipped on at least one of the road class pilots, but it does fit on some other pilots slash ships as well. We talked about B wings, right? They can take, um, a cannon, which does synergize with their S foils, allowing them to get that bonus attack, which is what we're talking about. What other pilots can this go on? I have a list prepared. Yep, Caracoon uh, does have a natural cannon yep. uh, mixed with the weapon hard point. She actually, oh, uh, she already has a three die attack. This is, I, I think, things that already pretty. have three dice attacks like this if it stays on that cheaper cost. Mm hmm. Yep, yep. B Wings. Uh, Colonel Jenden has double cannon slots. Uh, the IG 2000, the aggressor assault. Starfighter, uh, those all have double cannons. Uh, Crassus Trellix, the fire spray, Petty Officer Thanison, which would be a five dice attack from the Upsilon. Um, some of the couches, Covenel and Noden uh, and Pamich, all the named couches. Uh, I think I skipped over heavies, the Brutes, as I call them, the RBs, uh, the Assault. Configuration new uh, squadron pilots. I think that's just, I assume that's all. Or wait, uh, no, because the news start with an original cannon and right. then can get a second cannon from the configuration. And then the last one uh, is the Geonosian prototypes. Uh, the HMPs that get rerolls for spending tractor tokens. Uh, which could be good to tractor somebody into a uh, Gene Ocean's bullseye. <sighs> Tear that thing up. All right. Well, there is the spoilers that we got today here on Mondays. Hey, AMG, thanks for releasing stuff on Mondays. I appreciate you. Love you guys. All right. Let's jump in to some custom Sonari yeses. See what I did there, Will? You like that? It's catching on. It's catching yeah. on. All right. Um, so what I want to do today is, or what I did last week on Tuesday, because on Monday my computer decided to die. Uh, it just, you know, full full honor kill on itself. Um, we, Ryan and I were talking about it. We gave our ideas for custom scenarios. And we put a challenge out there to the community. Said, hey, you guys can post some in our Discord. We put some shout outs. We got a... A pretty big response. We had something like 30 entries. I'll be honest, didn't get to read through all of them. I did read through a bunch. Now, we're going to first actually talk about uh, Marcel and Will's idea. Also, would love to hear any updates from you for Ryan. I do have some updates as well from mine that I've done, some small tweaks. Uh, if you want the full details on those, go ahead, listen to episode 259. Um, but we're going to go through everybody. But one of the things that I noticed, and there were some that kind of got disqualified from being talked about, and I'm not going to call you out. But if I don't mention your name, and you notice as I'm going down the list that your name got skipped for one of two reasons. First, I tried to get as many people as possible. So basically, if you submitted more than one, I read your first one. And when I saw your name again, I just went ahead and skipped it just to be able to get a variety of people uh, and different ideas. And then second, there was unfortunately a bunch of people who missed a big part of the assignment. And that was that you can't add additional components out 
outside of what is standard. Like there was a, there was a couple where it was like you need six proximity mines. I'm like, nope, we can't. You, you, you doesn't that doesn't work, right? Or you oh you need an additional small base that doesn't. Act, I know pe- I know we have them, but in a tournament. I couldn't expect everybody to carry around a, a small base. My my thought is that at a tournament, I could suddenly pull out one of these scenarios and everybody has a stuff for it. And I, I made a I made a list of components there under the start here section on Discord. So uh, if you got skipped or something like that, then that's probably why. Uh, there were some that I didn't completely map out because I think they need some work, but they're going to be in our honorable honorable mentions section. But I want to start with Marcel because. Of course, the first thing Marcel does after we publish the episode is say that I was a terrible Marcel stand-in. All right, I got, I saw the comment. I'm like, I'm like, what, what? I was just, I was trying to kind of defend your point and just kind of be that side, and I just got completely trampled. So I just won't even try next time. Man, so Marcel, what are your thoughts? on what a scenario can be. So, um, full disclosure, I saw the first 10 minutes of, of last last week's episode and I said, I'm going to be Marcel. And then, and then after that, I'm like, okay, my decision, my, my mind is made up. And I, I posted that before you listening to it. I don't know what you guys said. I just assume it was wrong. <laughs> You just got Thanks. It. Well, he was pretending to be Marcel, so. Oh, yeah. oh, oh got him. Got him. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh, I'll take it. That was a good one. The um, So the part that I, I think that I was disagreeing with Brian for like a minute uh, during the chat in our Discord last, was um, that the engagement – should that the objective should encourage engagement um and my thought was that the objective should not discourage engagement but it doesn't need to like you don't need to you you shouldn't have to go after the objective in order to win uh at least in the one that I was thinking about. And there's other ones that you do have to go after the objective and win, like the ones that, you know, that they already made and some of the ones that I'm pretty sure we're going to read up. Mm-hmm. So the, I, and I don't even know if you guys already had the same idea. Cause again, I didn't go through the episode, but what I was thinking about for an objective would be similar to scavenger hunt. Is that scavenger hunt? The one, the uh, salvage, salvage, carry the mission? boxes with you. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. That one. So it's similar to the one that carry the boxes with you. It's the same objective number, so five of them, the same the same placement as all the other ones. So that doesn't change anything, just kind of keep it simple. Um, where it gets a little bit more complex is basically the um, the objective markers have three char- I don't know if you want to call them charges or the the fuse markers but mm-hmm. basically i have three of them when you when you grab it to pick it up you roll a die and then it's it's all offensive minded so if you roll a crit then while you attack you have the ship that's carrying that while that ship attacks it um can attack with one not can it does attack with one additional attack die so basically it's a plus one on your reds uh Period. It's not primary or anything. So if you got a torpedo, it's a five die torpedo. If you got advanced proton torpedo, it's a six die torpedo. Whatever, unless you know you max out at six, because that's that's how the game is. So a critical result, you get a plus one. A hit result when you pick it up, then it's either a focus or a blank turns into a hit. So it just becomes kind of like a, an automatic, um, like guidance chips from 1.0, basically. A focus result is a focus result turns to a hit. And then if you end up rolling a blank, it's like deplete. When you shoot, you shoot one less attack die. Um, And if that happens, you have the same, you know, 
you take an action to drop it. So if you pick it up, you take an action, you drop it, and somebody else can pick it up, and maybe they'll get better luck with it. And the three charges is basically at the end of each round, uh, you lose a charge. And when all the charges are gone, you... Uh, you know, that objective is gone. So it's basically a, a regular dogfight. There's no objective points. Uh, and the only benefit of engaging with the objectives is buffing your, your, um, your attack for three rounds. And, and again, it could be a pretty significant buff because you can, you know, an extra, you're hoping for that extra attack die, but even if you don't get that extra attack die, just getting that automatic hit every turn or getting that focus, soft focus every turn. How many objectives um, do you have? Five. So it's what's same, stopping it's... one or both players from grabbing one or two of them on their side and just leaving until they Nothing. want to engage on their perfect spot well well i was gonna say nothing and the what's stopping them is at the end of each round uh charge loses so you, you basically get three rounds with it you get to yeah, engage with it for three rounds could still decide to not engage even with it or without it yeah true so again this is not intended to the you know it we've been playing but i actually i can uh, I was, if i could jump in the i think you are incentivizing combat though because you're giving away offensive modifiers like i can see that line of thinking y yes you are but again it's 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 a dog fight it's we've been playing you know kill the opponent where when it makes sense for 10 years so it's it's not changing. It's, it's it's taking a twist. It's adding something else, adding an additional modifier. Um, you know, it's adding a little bit of variance with you know because when you could roll up and and you know not get something good, you could end up rolling a blank and now all of a sudden you're depleted. So it's adding some variance. It's adding a twist. It's supposed to be fun, uh, but it's still just it's a, it's a dog fight. So it's not like Oh, you have to accomplish this mission, and you have to like take the this part. I, that's I, that's not what I was thinking about when I was thinking about a mm -hmm. of a scenario or an objective. Uh, I I do have other ideas, which you know, again, I'm not gonna go over because we got a lot of them. Where you know, it's 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 you know, carry a dignitary. You know, you you you, you designate a ship as the one that you got to guard and protect. It's got automatic reinforce. You try to, sh you know, there's things like that that you can definitely make to make it more like thematic and make it um, like a, a game that's kind of like a Heroes of a, 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 the Atari Cluster or Turi Cluster, whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's things that you can do like that that have a point and you know there's 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 a story or there's a theme this is basically just mario kart is your the, the point of mario kart is to race when you pick up the to win the race when you pick up the little stars or whatever and then it randomizes and then it gives, gives you the star or it gives you the boost or something like that that's just an incentive to get out of your way a little bit to pick that up but the whole point of the the mario kart is still to race and get ahead of your opponent. Those, those buffs just help you do that. The idea behind the one that I had is basically, it's still just a dogfight, like similar to 1.0, similar to 2.0, very similar to chance engagement is you're trying to opposition and kill your opponent. There's just a, there's just an, an additional buff out there. I know that William had some ideas like, or I don't know, maybe it was you, Ryan, that instead of having like a, you roll and, you know, there's like a proton torpedo and you go and you pick up and now you got a proton torpedo charge and you can be a TIE fighter with a proton torpedo or whatever, <laughs> like if you pick it up. So there's other things like that. And I think I've seen them somewhere in some type of way. But anyway, that, that's my idea. And that's why I was saying that the objective doesn't need to encourage in my idea, the objective doesn't need to encourage engagement, but it doesn't like it doesn't make you not want to engage. You still want to go out there. You still want to pick up the buff because, um, you know, if you get buffs on one turn, the next two turns after that, you're going to be double modded or throwing extra dice or depleted. 
or, or depleted. But if you're depleted, you just you know take an action and drop it. You okay. lose an action. I mean, there's a there's a downside. So, so you have a a chance engagement type of variant. All right, but no so, way to score objective points, so it's all ship points. Right. So it's right. so it's basically just a, this. Uh, Do you would you score half points like, then? I would assume. Yeah, yeah. The way I had it is just similar to chance engagement, but without the centerpiece. Mm -hmm. So it's basically chance engagement without, like the way you score points is chance engagement without the, the you know having to contest the middle. Mm -hmm. Random engagement. <laughs> is, yeah. All right, what and you got for me, Will? All right. I have, uh, for lack of a better term, defend the satellite array. <laughs> uh, so why not? I mean, we're already using satellite tokens, right? Why not? Um, so in this one, I'm actually only uh, having the players set up three obstacles or three objectives, excuse me. Uh, the first one goes down in the center, as always. I don't think I put that in the thing, but... The, so the first one goes down in the center. And then each player must place one at range two. So exactly range two, wherever that would end up being. Um, but uh, Is that a specifically... Is that so how you word it? Range two board edge or range two of what? Of the center objective. All right, here, here we go, Will. So we got what? the middle, and then, and then at range two. You can put it anywhere you feel like at range two. All right. I don't have a range two stick, but basically range two between, like a range two stick between these. Exactly. Yep. Got it has to be it. exactly range two. All right. Uh, then each player places one, so you can put a, a third one out there. So it'll be three total objectives uh the the one you place though will be controlled by you as a note uh because the the objectives can be controlled these different satellites so when you place down your objective it is under your control the the middle one would remain neutral uh for the time being so Defending the satellite, or excuse me, let's go on to scoring. Uh, if you destroy a satellite not controlled by you, you're awarded three mission points, and the control of the satellite goes to you. So you can imagine a scenario where you could... Uh, in the beginning, you could just get six easy points if you go out and destroy the two uh, objectives you don't control. But then they're all controlled by you, and you're kind of capped out uh, for the time being, which then flips it to, you guessed it, defending the satellite's uh, arrays. Now, uh, of course, you score uh, ship points. Uh, no half points, though. Uh, for this scenario, playing to 20 points, all that's pretty standard. Mm -hmm. Now, these satellites. Uh, this is where we could probably tweak it. Um, I left them at two agility and four hull. I feel like that's like two or three shots. I feel like could take down two agility, four hull, but not normally one shot, right? You'd have to have a big attack, a proton torpedo or something coming at it, right? But uh, they do regain hull when the, you would gain control of it. So you destroy it, it becomes yours, it goes back up to four hull. And I threw in some rules about how you deal damage cards to it. Uh, but that doesn't really matter. They're, they're adult damage cards. Uh, so like direct hit could actually take effect, um, but probably not any of the other crits. Fuel leak, I guess. Like fuel leak into a second crit could take effect. But... I am allowing, though, a scenario action called Defend. And you could take your action, same thing, like perform action step, all, all that's pretty standard. Um, but you can give a satellite uh, a evade token. Doesn't even have to be yours. So you can, the neutral one in the beginning, you could just dump an evade token on it, uh, which 
so the the point of it is to encourage uh, a um, an attack pattern, right? You might not actually be jousting the enemy. You might just be jousting right for their satellite or more specifically, the middle one, because the middle one is going to be, I think, the most interesting. Uh, that because neither player controls it, both players could, in theory, have access to destroy it right away. So if you're like an I-6, you might not want to shoot at that middle satellite if an I-5 on the opposing team could follow up on it with an attack and potentially gain control of it. So there's a little bit of uh, give and take there in the middle. Uh, but the, the outside objectives, the, the, the two that are placed, um, you know, you kind of have to have a uh, decision there. Do you like hold a ship back who could just feed it evades? Uh, there's no restriction on that. And you could just dump six evades onto it, but then None of you your, six your ships, actions, right? Yeah, none of your ships took actions, so that might be bad for you. Uh, and then, of course, like I said, if you, uh, this is kind of the comeback mechanic that I wanted to uh, find the balance of. And I think that was actually the hardest thing for me is that to find a scenario where you could, in theory, win by objectives, but you couldn't win by only objectives. And same thing, I wanted a scenario where uh, the losing player has a goal then to go out and find these points. Uh, now, if you own all the, all the scenarios, that would, you probably would have been awarded at least three or six points. But if your opponent's just killing your ships, they don't really care about attacking your satellites, that's something that you had to react to pretty quickly. Right. Uh, so there's a little bit of a give and take. And I think that's the, after doing a lot of, what do I say, like theory crafting, uh, being able to give uh, the losing player an out is I think the, uh, the challenging part uh, to balance, like I said, Balancing the, a comeback mechanic versus a win only on objectives mechanic. And how do you, um, how do you score again? You uh, do uh, four damage to an objective you don't control, and you'll get three mission points. The so one you don't control, including the one that's neutral in the beginning, right? Yes, you can. Uh, like I said, that's the tricky one where both of you could be attacking it, but because nobody controls it, if you attack it and put it down to one health, I could then attack it as well. Okay, so, so that that kind of I'm not sure. I've just seen a long run in like trying it out because this actually does seem pretty cool. Well, I want to try this. How, out. how many points is your current vision? Sorry, I just want to make sure I have it written down. Uh, four damage would equal three points. Got it. Yeah, because you're not recurring points every round by just holding it. You actually have to kill. And that's what I was wondering is like, as long as you get points for the neutral one, that should still incentivize players to go at it. Because if it didn't, then they could like, they would, why, why would they go for one? They wouldn't get points for, and then their opponent to immediately just get it anyway, mm -hmm. get the points from them getting right. it. So they would just, they would never go for the middle. And they would only just keep keep and defend their two. As long mm -hmm. as you do get initial points on the first one, you may, I don't know, that might be probably too complicated to consider of needing to up that first initial neutral point grab a little bit. Points no, I mean, there's fast enough shifts. You could go in there and just give it an evade action, right? System phase yeah. boost five forward, give it an evade. Um, I think also to lessen the chance for damage card running out issues, um, I think every time a satellite's because it sounds like you do want to actually have them deal like crit effects to them. So yeah, crit, it, like, crit as, should matter. They should have some so effect. So if you if you want them to matter on the satellites at least for the extra damage, I think once a satellite is dead, you take the damage cards that were dealt to that and just reshuffle them back in your deck. Mm, okay. Okay. Because you're likely you, you could cycle that way. You can count cards really quick. either. Yeah, you can you can just be like, oh, good, all my direct hits are out of my deck, or something like mm. that. Yeah, at least you're always cycling the satellite cards on each player's side. That makes sense. I like that. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, I think I think I think there's something there's something here. I, I like it. I like it. the The question is going to be how many how many points for sure. Yeah, and... yeah, it could be three or four. And I was waffling on how much hull as well, mm -hmm. um, and agility then too. I thought three agility too much. One agility, you might as well not even be rolling it, right? Yeah, I think this is a good starting point, and then just try a bunch of times and see what might need to be tweaked. Yeah, those I mean, those might need to extend out to range telling, three, like, but so obviously only having to do four hull worth of damage against two agility that's pretty much like killing a Z ninety five, right? Right. Um, or a striker, but yeah, or a striker, right? And some of those ships are three points in cost at their like lowest version. Um, so as that is equivalent, it's still taking a shot away from actually taking enemy ships off the board. So I, I like that there is situational times where you're going to have to make that decision, which one's more worth it. Right. And that's kind of the, the thought process is that like you're, you shouldn't want to just leave your satellite alone and just commit everything to attacking the enemy's one because then you're just going to be trading three points back and forth. Uh, you're not, yeah, you're not actually going to be gaining any ground. Um, so like I said, do you keep a ship behind to feed it evades? Uh, as a potential, like I said, can you, can you get into the center objective and give it an evade uh, and be safe while doing that? And or is it just more advanced, like, uh, and then, like I said, that that goes down to like, what's your list versus the opponents? Do they have an I six with a proton torpedo? Like, is a Wywakin out there? Like, you might you might be more scared of it attacking you than the satellites, right? So yeah, it, it does actually make the the scenario effect on the on the game in this matchup actually does favor the lower initiative because they shoot later and they're more likely to. Uh, see the full board state and the mm -hmm. state of the satellites to know what they want to shoot or go after. Whereas the earlier you shoot, the opponent could just react and nab those three points back and neutralize what you just did with a higher initiative ship that could have had a better see, chance at killing an, an initiative killing or something. See, that's see, and that's the other thing too is that your uh, goalkeepers, your defenders, if you um, if you attack the thing that they're defending well it's not theirs anymore so then they could attack it you could both score three points in theory on the same round against the same objective so like are you but are you willing to trade that like because it's not really gaining ground either way yeah if anything that's whoever whatever players currently in the lead that's helping them because they're just they're both moving at the same clip I find it interesting that both the high and the low initiative ships have a job in this one. Like as as you continue to to flip flop, it, I I find it very interesting. It's cool, Will. I like I like the concept, man. Yeah, yeah. We didn't like I said. I was trying to the the original goal was I wanted to attack an objective. Mm -hmm. I want to do something with my shot. Uh, and that choice of do I shoot a five point ship? Or do I shoot a three-point objective? Mm -hmm. Like, where is that calculation at? And uh, I, I would hope to, uh, like I said, you'd have to react a lot, had to make a lot of decisions on the fly about whether you're per you're defending or attacking. And what did you call this one, Will? <laughs> Defend the satellite array. <laughs> There no, way, we right, no, I take the, no, 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 I take defend on the satellite array. <laughs> yeah, no, no at. No, nope, defend on. on the satellite array. Don't, don't worry about it, dude. You know, it's, <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's called. <laughs> It actually describes what's happening in the battle. Defend the array. <laughs> oh, okay. Defend the array. That works. Just just to make it fit pretty. There you go. Okay. So there, there's a, a quick quick write-up of, of that one. All right. So going through the objectives that we got, um, 
there was one, two, three, four. There was four from the list that I probably read through about 15 or 16. Four that really stuck out to me as ideas that they might not necessarily be complete, but like the final versions of them, but they have there's something there it's been thought through and it has an interesting or different mechanic that i haven't seen so uh we're gonna go ahead we're gonna check those out let's go ahead and let me pull that up give me one second here gotta close windows there we go so the first one i want to go ahead and talk about uh comes from our friend psych j7 okay the solar corona i will tell you psych j7 submitted like 10 of these not really like 10 like four or four or five so i do want to go back and read those other ones when i was going through i didn't look at them mostly because again one per person uh but there were two very or, or a couple of different things that i really liked about this one so uh very basic idea for his setup here was that he had um th the setup would be the same every time with one objective being in the center at range one from the edge and then range three from the opposite it could be flipped no matter which which side it is and um you have this this thing where if you control the same same as assault on at the satellite array uh where if you're in the area you control it you get three points for one of them and only one point for the other basically the one that is closer to the outside board board edge what he considered what he called the solar corona um thematically uh i'm not entirely sure where the theme is like i think i needed a small explanation for why this one is three points it it sounds like uh it's an armada uh objective yeah type. armada has a mission called solar corona the idea is like you mentioned one board edge is basically a big solar star sun, mm -hmm. right? And they want you to incentivize being over there, but also there's the negative effect, which he goes into later, of if your ship is pointing at it, your pilot's kind of blinded and has some uh, debuff modifications to its attacks. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I said so, if, if, the, if this objective is in the attack arc, you when you're attacking enemy ships you f one of your focuses goes to a blank is the is what he had in his right now so yeah there was a variable uh area control which i really liked and um like you could get more points but that that risk of fighting in that area uh could be could be bad be bad so i just i just found that one interesting um and i guess it is i i wasn't aware that it's it's already a armada this is more of kind of a modified uh armado scenario um ideas the, do you think this works in x-wing ideas good bad tweaks thoughts Ooh, i was just mentioning about how i wanted objectives to have a penalty while you're trying to score them and this kind of uh, focus to blank penalty, if you're looking at the solar array, I think is very interesting. Uh, it basically is punishing that neutral edge joust over there. You have to figure, find other ways uh, to position yourself yeah, okay. uh, and still get those uh, points. The other thing you'll see, I have this yellow box extended all the way to our board edge here. Uh, obstacles can be placed anywhere on this uh, in this yellow edge so it also changes the way that the field is also set up because obstacles can be placed within range one of the board okay that's interesting that that helps it so it's not just a clear field on that side mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely definitely fits the bill in terms of starting simple um and trying to see does this base idea work will people have fun with it mm -hmm. does it solve what a scenario needs to do um the first step i would consider if you wanted to try a, a variation out is to actually add a third objective point um 
I would take the one, the one that costs one point, shift it over one line so it's two from the other board edge. Right here, Liam, give me one then, second. I'll make a copy of this so that we can, yeah, sure. we can edit Again, it Again, I would still do this first before right. considering my suggestion just to make sure that, like, this base works. i just not sure if... So I, what I don't it, know. Maybe maybe two objectives is enough, but um, you know, maybe try three. So yeah, put it over there, and then basically put a third one right in the middle of the between those two, and that one costs two points. And you could um, basically, as the points increase, you increase the debuff effect. So let's say the middle one. Um, has a slightly lesser debuff or has this current debuff and the and the one later is even worse. At the three point. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I would, again, try the first iteration. I was just thinking of a way to incorporate a third objective that followed the aspect of as you get closer to that board edge, things get worse for you trying to mm. shoot. Maybe a... Uh hit to focus for the middle one yeah you can drop the hit down to a focus or you do the focus to blank on the middle one and then you I mean you could take a single hit all the way down to a blank on the third one mm. you really have to use your targeting computers and not your eyes right get those target locks Okay, cool. I mean, yeah, th those definitely could be variations. And uh, when we were talking about it last week, when you're designing scenarios, is you might have a lot of ideas, and these are places you can go and try after starting, you know, kind of testing the base idea and going from there. Now, the next one that I wanted to talk about here um, is a variant on one of our current ones, or at least that's what the author said. So, uh, Sammy, uh, Sammy, AKA Netter Mizuno, he basically called this, uh, assault at the satellite array version two, but I, I think you said that backwards, by the way, what did I say it backwards? <laughs> Netter also known as Sammy. Oh yeah. Did I, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> um, I, I want to argue with him in saying his idea is not assault at the satellite array. It's a completely different idea. I like it, though, and that's why I left it in the list. Give it a slap a different name on it and let it be something else. You know, let it let it be something else. I think it's OK. So here is the. Um, the basic idea that he had he said that if you control it you get one point like that's that's pretty basic right that's very similar to what we know you know the whole large base small base rules um but he added a couple of twists in there first there's only four scenario tokens out there and there is an exact placement for them so the the first one if you're thinking you're looking at the board is right in front of you at the edge of range two just inside of range two and you're basically range two from all the board edges uh center from all board edges as well so the neutral edges and the player edges range two uh center so it makes this cross in the middle uh, if you control you get one point um if you control more satellites then your opponent, you get an additional point each turn. Uh, so that's interestingly leaning into the snowball mechanic, which I, I wonder what Marcel's thought is about that. And he also added this, which this I didn't entirely understand. He said, if you if you controlled the, not, I guess not that I understand. I would like to know the reasoning why. If you controlled the objective on the opposite side of the board so your opponent's side objective you would also get an additional point now my thought is this is one step too far in complexity i think um at least in initial testing but i would love to know your thoughts uh marcel start with you uh i like the idea of objective markers being predetermined mm -hmm. 
um, I just think that that'll speed up setup time a lot because it's it's choices that you don't have to make at the beginning. So it's just okay. We know you're going to put this here, or we know you know it's it's preset. So that that I think is is, is already uh, a positive. The less than five for that same I think satellite. Assault or King of the Hill is probably my favorite of the objectives because it's, you know, it's it's not taking too much away from from the way that you know that I like playing the game. So it's 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 already, you know, you're still taking your actions and you're still doing a lot of a lot of what you want to do, but um, it it doesn't by having four it doesn't probably create the the, the same amount of snowfall. Mm -hmm. or snowball effect to your point if you're adding plus one so i think what he was saying is if i if i understand it correctly if they're all contested but one of them is not so let's say the top three are contested and then the bottom one is not contested you know the red player has the bottom one is he saying that would count as two points? Yep. Uh, yeah. Because you would have one, and they don't also have one, therefore you get two. Yes. So Oof. if you are not equal, the one person who has more gets one extra point. Um, it, it's basically to limit that you can't get four points per round. Yep. You could at most get three. No, you can at most get five. No, no controlling three. one. Controlling more than your opponent. Oh, now. okay. So you don't get yeah, so one, one per controlling each any one. one at all. You don't get one per each. Okay, so if you're controlling three versus one, you still only right. get two points. Well, okay, then in that case, three. I don't. I, I, Unless it's the far one, and then you would score three. Well, that that just that, that's just. Uh, I agree with you on like that. You, you start it's adding too many. Yeah. So I actually like that. I like the idea of okay, if you if you have. If you're controlling one, at least one, you get one point. If you're controlling more than your opponent, you get another one. I, I like that. One and two. So that's basically one and two points every single every single. Yeah, but there's four, turn. though, too. So that it, most of the time, I would assume, would be two on two. There Which wouldn't is still be one point each. One point per round. Yeah, so that's um, what I'm saying. Like one is, or two points every turn, I like points. it. Yep. Ships. I so think he needs to, just... at least in the wording, he needs to clarify how you gain points from these because it's, again, it's called Assault on the Salary V2, so we kind of get that. But if you were to show this to a person, I don't think it says specifically whether it's how you're holding an objective. Yeah, I, I actually think... like this one a lot. I uh, think I like this, this needs one a, new... a lot, minus the. <laughs> three points for the far edge one well so i i do agree i think it's probably off this like it's a little bit more complex than the simple base of it right now but i think i know why he's considering it because right now they could just get like because there's only four objectives there's not five there's very very little incentive to go get that third one across the board because if you don't have that additional scoring potential in that across the board one, um, you're basically saying, okay, you get one more point. That's it. Every, every round you have more than your opponent to, in most cases to try and do that and accomplish that you're, you might be putting yourself in a worse position than if you were just to defend your two. There's a risk to it, yeah, right? Like there's, there's, there's a lot of high risk to going to get that third one uh, if both lists have two, have claimed sort of their, their two that they're taking um, for just one point. So he's trying to add another incentive to going to get that that one across the board now to maybe lessen the the complexity of adding more points to like incentivize going to get more if you just plainly say if you have more than your opponent you get two points instead of just one 
maybe it's a higher incentive and it just simply takes care of that issue instead of saying you need to do the behind enemy line style point um if you just simply increase the point point amount you gain um by having more than your opponent then maybe they there will be a more incentive to go take that risk and have more objectives than your opponent does yeah what i like about this without the extra layers of you know go and get the other side or get two points versus one is that an objective like this makes it easier for a three ship list to compete because the the most you can be going down by is one or two points a turn and most most likely you're only going down one point a turn because it's one 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 two like you got one and they got three it's still one to two so you're only coming down by one um because a lot of the a lot of the missions just penalize having less amount of ships you know whether it's you know action economy because you have to take an action to claim it or because you can only be in one spot at one time so i I like that this gives a smaller ship count a a a more equal footing still a disadvantage but more equal footing all right well that's that is this again sammy don't call it uh, don't try to fix assault on the satellite array let that be its own thing this is something different and i like it so let's let's work on it a little bit I think you coined it behind enemy lines. <laughs> well, if if he goes if that for mechanic that stays, yeah. yeah. If that if that stays, all righty. Uh, the next one comes from Sevwall, and uh, this is another one where I thought, like, no offense, I the, the the name not a fan. Decommission. All right, I I wanted a little more spice in the name, but. Um, let me go ahead and explain this one. So the basic idea is that you need to protect your droid. You have one objective token each. So there's a total of two objective tokens on the board. Uh, you're going to be placing that on your side of the board. All right. On your side of the board uh, within range two to three of your board edge. He words it different, but that's what it ends up being. Range two to three of your board edge. Uh, I illustrated it here. You can move it anywhere from left to right. And if you are able to destroy your enemy's droid, you get seven points. So that's how you can score. That's the objective points that you can get there. Um, also, he added, uh, again, a, a snowball mechanic. Uh, plus one point a turn uh, for every turn that your enemy doesn't have a droid, but you do. So once you've destroyed your enemies, every turn that yours is alive, you're also racking up points. I believe this one also has uh, points for destroying ships. I'm not sure. Does it have half points there? So I know you guys are looking at it. It has half points as well. Yes. Um, and then at initiative zero, these droids do move around, and it currently it allows them to use the nubs that it has to execute one hards or two straights at initiative zero in the activation phase. No actions. Um, but yeah, that's the base idea. Initial thoughts. So the profile oh, yeah. of the reconnaissance droid, initiative zero, attack zero, defense dice two hall four it's an object which just means it's a base thing in the game after an enemy ship overlaps you you suffer two damage activation phase yep you do the relocate and engagement phase cannot attack man that thing seems real easy to kill especially uh, when it, you just overlap it and it uh it can just perform an, an, an invade action uh, just say here, so it does. It does uh, get some sort of modification. But man, um, basically getting rid of half yeah. of it by just running it over. Yeah, I would. First thing I'm doing is I'm putting that thing up to like eight, a whole maybe six, it maybe put it at a, one agility, like eight hull. I, I think I'm, I'm worried it. about it. I'm worried that it's you could just ignore your opponent and just go kill that thing. Um. 
Is there anything on here for... It might help. So, man, this... this Without a reason to actually... I mean, so... You you do want to go get your opponents destroyed, obviously. Mm -hmm. I think that's why he made it seven points. That's why he's trying to make yeah. it tempting. Yeah. yeah. You do need to go get it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'm concerned that the game just turns into the players kind of, like, donutting themselves around the board edge, not sure who's going to actually, like, leave themselves hanging out to dry in the wrong way to engage to get the droid, you know what I mean? They're all just huddling around the droid, going in a circle around the board. I think it might help the scenario to have a chance engagement like thing where it's not the ships but the droid needs to be within that chance engagement bubble to make sure you're not giving up like how chance engagement is if any one ship is in or if you as long as you have a ship and your opponent doesn't you gain a point in chance engagement you're trying to, you want to Dude, incentivize that, a droid to be in inside the box. Yeah, I, I would like to incentivize the droid to okay. not just be on the board edge the entire game. I, I would want to uh, But I would also up its create, survivability. Uh, I'm imagining like a what's the what's the game the kids play with the firewall and the the building and the not Fortnite Fortnite, yes. That has the firewall condenses the map down smaller and smaller. Dion, you're like the only person who's played this game, so. <laughs> I mean, no, I, mean I, know, I know what I it is. I know what you're talking I, about. I, I know the oh, basic okay. concept. Okay, sure. But, but that's what sure I'm how imagining. Well, how well you can execute it clean at the end. The next at the end of at the end of uh, round one, all droids at range one of the board edge suffer a damage. At the end of rain, round two, all the droids at range two of the board edge suffer a damage. So you're kind of forcing the droids closer and closer to the middle. I don't know if that's the exact way to do it, but uh, it could be a way to incentivize that at least the droids are not just hard wanting and two forwarding down the, the board edges, right? Yeah. I think I would definitely get rid of the if enemy ship overlaps you, so for dudes, like I don't like the idea of them people just being able to run over it. I want people to consider shooting it or shooting enemy ships. Um, I actually think it'd be kind of cool if this thing did something in the engagement phase, but not it doing something for itself, like shooting. But uh, it, jams all ships every inch one, maybe. Jam or uh, I think either jamming enemy ships or and or similar to Darkwood probe droids, uh, providing free locks or rerolls, kind of like sensor buoys. Like the the reconnaissance part of it, I I like to build. You know what I mean. I like that. So like, have a reason for these droids to not only be closer to each other, but provide buffs to your ships because it's reconnaissancing for you. I like that. Interesting. Yeah, these these are I like these tweaks. And again, like it. Um, do you think what what do you think about the droid being able to move a little faster than one hard and two forward? Yeah, I mean maybe uh, to honestly like it needs to be moving. Like it might as well just be moving at three speeds. Yeah, like choose a three speed maneuver because you I, need to get out of there. Uh, I know <laughs> you we want to not set specific tokens from specific upgrades but man it'd be really perfect if this was literally just a dark one probe droid with like <laughs> use the two straight the two banks all those pentagon sides mm -hmm. and not just the front or the back or whatever like that's a lot of places to let it go right that's the only knock is of, of doing that is that you're requiring someone to own dark one probe droids right right but we can we can kind of by just saying any three speed maneuver while it doesn't have as many angles it can go it does give them the the options of straight bank or hard turns like you get some yeah. some maneuver i mean there's some there. guessing like you don't know like, is it three straight in this way or is it three bank in the opposite direction right yeah. like it could I wouldn't mind if if it was a if it was a token that's like an objective token that is for basically forward guides and back guides they can go front forward or backward yeah uh to the because because they don't have a front or a back i would say you use either side just yeah. just go yeah well that's well, what i'm thinking is like uh the 
the PDF ones. I'm spoiled with the curl pro ones, but right. the, the PDF ones, do they have markers on the left and right? Like the non nub side? Is there a, oh, like like a little hash, hash or mark? something? Uh, I don't think so. Look. But that would be uh, that'd be a way to at least go in four directions. No, they don't. Oh. Just say you can. Just <laughs> just say you can. Whatever. If we're doing three speed maneuvers out front or back, I think that's enough of a starting point to go from. Um, yeah, I, I would allow them to increase their speed uh, to going any two or three speed maneuver, figure out which how fast you want it to go. Provide a debuff to enemy ships and or a buff to your ships in some capacity as being a reconnaissance droid. And uh, maybe up its hull to six. And just go from there. Mm -hmm. Seven points is a lot to give yeah, away. It needs, a lot. it needs a lot more hull. It needs to be something that you couldn't take out in just one round of combat. You can't just roll up with two proton torp carriers and just blast it. I mean, one proton torp, right? Like, at four hole. <laughs> on, a, on a bad day, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. But the the base idea of this, I really liked it. I was I was like, there's there's some tweaking that needs to be done. But Sevwal, I like I like where your head was at with this one. Like, there was definitely some good stuff here. So thank you for your uh, submission. I got one more that I want to show you guys uh, for the kind of the ones that are a little bit more complete before we get to our honorable mentions. But I want to re remind you, you can submit your own ideas or if you want to talk about it on our uh, – ah, what in the world? Hello, computer. Okay. Let's put this away. Thanks, Windows. Um uh, if you want to submit your ideas on Discord, feel free to go ahead and uh, and do that. So here we go. The next one is capture the escape pods. Capture the escape pods. All right. This one comes from Crispy. This one comes for Crispy. Now, um, this one has a little bit more complex of a setup. Um, and I wonder... I understand what he's doing, but at the same time, I do think the setup could be problematic, but I'll explain here in a minute. So, um, in the setup, he explains that he says player two, after you do, when you're putting, when you're determining player order, player two is the one that's actually going to place the quote unquote first not the first, but the first uh, objective. And he says, put it beyond range four of your own edge. So if you're watching at home, so beyond range four of your edge, you see we got four, uh, four squares and then just beyond it, you would probably end up putting it as close to that edge as possible. And the wording at this point is a little rough, but essentially then you just alternate back and forth within range three to four of your side, my side, my side, your side is what ends up happening there. Um, again, if you want to check out the diagrams, they're all going to be in the posted on Discord. Uh, but the the idea here uh, is he has this uh, controlling like we've done before by having your ships within a certain area, but he's adjusted the way control works to include remotes, which I thought was really interesting. Um, I wonder if the added layer of complexity of changing the value of small, medium, and large base ships is worth it. That's a question that would have to be tested. But uh, remotes do count towards potentially controlling an escape pod. And the idea is that if you control it, you get to do a two-speed maneuver with that pod and, and as you control it if you are able to fly it off of your own board edge you get four points for it so you're trying to control and then move these escape pods towards you and that is that's the game does this one have destruction points in it and remember one of them i think is full you need full destruction for this one or full destruction full no destruction. half points no half points Marcel, what are your thoughts on this one? Uh, yeah. 
uh, I'd, I'd have to digest it. It's uh, I, I get what's going on. I didn't play the droid soccer. This is giving me like a little bit of droid soccer feel, mm -hmm. but um, I didn't play it, and I really didn't see it. I, you guys had. Uh, uh, William had a better idea of how how, how it was re received, but it just um... so imagine assault at the satellite array, but you could if if you controlled it, you could move it. That's essentially the idea with different. And you placement. have to get it into your own uh, off the board. You got to get it off oh, so the you board. You have to get it off the board. Yeah. So basically, off your own board. Off, yeah, your, off own board. your own board, and and then you get four points if you do. Mm hmm. So there's 20 points. By five of them being out there, there's 20 points potentially up for grabs. Yeah, uh, with those oh, but you only, gain points at, you only gain points at all if you bring them to your board edge. Is that right? Not controlling them, not in right. not nope. another board edge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. So you're not, you're not accumulating points be, by controlling them. You're just moving you're them to, closer to your edge. You're trying to set it up, yep. I, 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 I don't know. I, I feel like it would make it – well, I don't know. I, I, I don't I, – this is one of those where you have to play it a few times mm -hmm. in order to really get it because uh, let's say, you know, if you start off, you keep uh, a slow ship in the back and in two turns you can basically take something that's close to your edge off the board in two turns right two forward twice is almost basically the center of the board right um so that's that would be almost like an automatic four points by keeping one ship back and then creating a a like a, you keep one ship back and then you move the other ones forward to go control or control the center and not so that so you have an so you, ba you basically end up having an escort right you have an escort ship to to grab the pods and bring them back to you uh and the the, yeah. que the question is i understand kind of where you're feeling is like how's this actually play interact uh, interaction wise yeah because it gives me it, it, it it's it basically gives me the feel that you would you would each get four points you know get one close to yourself each get four points and then after that ignore them and just try to kill each other um well, I don't that's know. the question can you can you go and disrupt the one they're trying to get off the board in two rounds no. It would probably take three, but the whole reason I think he's put in the first one at range four is so you can't do that. But mm -hmm. I think I think it ends up being like three. Whatever. I wouldn't let him score it. Oh yeah, I guess at the end of the third round, you could probably fly one off the board. But you could also get your ship all the way across the board to contest it in three rounds, though, if you're right. fast enough. And that's the thing. Oh. Like, so, so you almost you almost start the you start the game thinking it's eight to eight. Like that's the score because you've been able to score the two closest to you. Is that what you guys are thinking? Not necessarily. I mean, I'm actually interested in this. Well, one. I, mean, I think it might have a lot of play. What's the closest you can you can start? Not the first one, but what's the closest you can start one? The the closest you can start the objective would be at range three. So right. You know, here. Range three. So yeah, that would take three turns. So I I think we need to simplify this first. Um, I think we need to go down to three objectives and place them equally across the middle. Yeah, dodgeball style, right? That's yep. that's what I had in my go mind. Dodgeball style, where we're not we're not allowing people to put them like wherever they want, put them closer, and then just they'll get their two, and then we'll go fight for the one, maybe. Let's put them all across the middle, however many you're going to do. So three's probably a good starting point, because you got two of them, but then there's always just the odd number. And then fight for pushing them across the board, or pulling them, out, whatever you want to say. I like that. Yeah, I'm going... I go back and forth, but... Uh... 
for a lot of these like set objectives would really speed things up like and just like diminish the complexity uh tremendously if you just like i know it's like less interesting because you don't have a say in that but at what point is that you know that losing out on that strategic decisions hurting the the overall like gameplay mm -hmm. like sometimes, it's too many decisions like like we're seeing I, I think like we're seeing in this one allowing the freedom of player decision ends up over complicating and then making the objectives either too easy to accomplish and then they just get to a stalemate or like the setup time as you mentioned on this one just could probably feel like it's long whereas you know the simple thing is we've we made dodgeball we have an odd number whether it's three or five go in the middle bring it back across instead of throwing it back to your opponent you're just trying to get it back home <laughs> uh, we call this in elementary school we call this steal the bacon <laughs> steal the bacon <laughs> they put out they put out uh like a rope in the middle of the okay. uh, uh, and you just ran you just ran. <laughs> We had kids hit each other's heads a few times. It was fine. It were, we all ended up okay. Uh, but, yeah, it was called Steal the Bacon. <laughs> now, what could be interesting to maybe minimize how quickly even two of them make it to the board edge, say if it's neutral and not one player controls it, it does a one straight maneuver back to its original center spot wherever it is it like gravitates back to the middle if it's neutral that way that, that there is a way that if it's because it's really hard i think it, it could be really hard to go into your opponent's area to slow down or or like you're not you're, you're never you can slow it down by having it not go forward but it's never coming back is, I think, my problem unless you fully take control of it, which can be hard in your opponent's area. But Maybe try it without that for now, but I think that's an avenue to yeah. consider my, is, to is have the speed going wherever. If you control it, it should always go faster than trying to go back to the neutral zone. To play devil's advocate here just a little bit, with the number of turns that we're playing – could it like one or two turns of it not moving might be enough for it not to be scored? Maybe if you're playing right. five. Yeah, six I'm, turns. I'm as, thinking as, more as long of a... as as long as you can earn points by just controlling them. Because right now that's not the case. Right. By their rules, you only gain points by getting them to the end the end zone or your deployment zone. Mm -hmm. I, I think. Unless I'm yeah, it might be something worth looking at. Of uh, you were talking about the remotes could uh, drive one of these escape pods around, um, but my mind actually went the other way to do it more like chance, to where you had to be the only uh, people. It could be a remote, sure, but only friendlies on your team. Uh, anyway, how do how do they phrase it in chance engagement? If there's no other enemy sh if there's no enemy ships in range of it mm -hmm. then it's yours that might uh, might be a, an easy way to simplify it because then like i said you just contrail just five forward boosts it just to guarantee that you can't move that objective to the end zone sure you're just gonna die to like the four ships you have right next to it but he he died to in a trade that you wouldn't get scored the droid that round hmm Yeah, this I again the cool concepts that need that need testing, but uh, I really really like this crispy. Can you know keep? I would I would iterate on this. Take a look at our suggestions. Tell us. Let us know what you think. Uh, I would love I would love to know. Now for the honorable mentions, I didn't make um I didn't make uh, any diagrams for them. So this is just going to be uh, word of my mouth, but this will be pretty pretty quick. So I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven honorable mentions. I'll, I'll buster them quickly. So, uh, Nicholas God, the hostage exchange. So, uh, the basic idea here being that there is a player token on the opposite side that you're trying to get. Um, I like that idea 
but just the wording right now in the document doesn't it's not 100 percent clear it could be a language barrier I mean, nicholas speaks really good english but it might be just a writing thing or i feel like there's like a couple sentences missing to clarify more how to play it honorable mention there for nicholas god cursed kiwi had uh, sliced the secure navigational buoys um it's kind of like a scramble the transmission variant uh with the buoys uh put that that are not claimed doing damage if you're at uh, if it was un if it was unclaimed they do damage to people at range zero to one uh again there's some wording in there that is unclear like when the game ends so i would just double check through that take a look uh Botto, battle of the debris shower um this was pretty cool this was pretty cool because the idea was uh you don't need debris obstacles but that the objects the, the objectives themselves are debris and basically there you could claim a debris and it would connect to your opponent's chosen debris and people within the, basically in the line between those two would take damage the problem that i had with it i like the concept was accurate accurate accurately measuring between like that line like it's like a laser that kind of happens or the idea i think being that like that's the where the debris is passing through um again interesting because it would end up giving people a stress a potential damage uh because you're fighting in a debris field but accurately um measuring that straight line between the two from the center to center um especially if their objectives are far away from each other could be a problem um Lanbolo had one here that i really liked capture the intel but it just needs to be tidied up um the basic idea is this he was the only one that i came across that did the challenge that i was i had mentioned before and that is giving each player something different to do kind of versus each other and the the idea is is awesome like there's satellites in there and you're either depending on the, which player you are you are trying to protect the data versus someone who is trying to steal the data what i think needs tidying up is how those points are scored and and just i think it's mostly going to be organization of how how it's written down on the document i really like the idea um one Actually, of the other re reading it says oh, okay all right sorry he just clarifies what the five objective tokens are one array hub and four satellites i thought yeah. it was five objective tokens one array hub and four satellites i was like that is way too many things no 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 yeah one of them yeah the, there's the middle one is the the array and the other ones are the satellites um but one of the issues that did come up that I, when I was messing around with it is with the current setup rules, you have six obstacles. You either need to – because right now I believe there was like a range two limitation uh, between any obstacles and the satellites. But with that, you can end up with a situation where you can't fit all the obstacles in. So either reduce the range for obstacles or just reduce the number of obstacles. Keep the same rule but just say, hey – we only use four obstacles or something like that. Like, that's okay. You can, if people are carrying around three, you can still have two each. Uh, that is cool. But I think um, the base idea is really good and just warrants some exploration. Yeah, I like, I like that uh, asymmetric. Actually, yes. that's that's a that's a very interesting avenue to go down. Because I, I mentioned it as like a toss away last week. I was like, I don't know if that's even possible. And he was the only one that I came across that actually took a stab at it. So that prop. I mean, yeah. I mean, Definitely going to be really, really hard to balance. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yes. But I mean, that's, I think that's, I mean, very few real life scenarios do both uh, opponents have the same objective. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's a good line of thinking, actually. All righty. And um, let's see. A couple of other ones. Xander did a freeze tag. I hate the name. I'm telling you guys, make the names thematic because it's more fun. Star Wars here, okay? Um, basically, like you're in a black matter. Um, one of the issues, like, it's okay. 
it's okay. And I'm only saying like it's a dog fight variant. And I wondered if there's something we could do to spice it up outside of this, you know, you can freeze, end up being frozen, and you have an unfreeze action. Like, I wonder if there there could be something more. Again, Xander, base idea? Cool. Let's explore it a little further. Um, last one. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Last two. Uh, Mary Delch. Mary Delch, who jumped on Discord, said, I've never, I don't even use Discord, but I wanted to submit this. So if you remember last week, I did a racing. I was like, I have this idea for some type of race. Um, they submitted an idea for a racing, for a racing one. Uh, they were building off my idea for some type of racing variant. Uh, but the problem is like there is a slew of additional rules. Like there's a whole page of additional rules. And I think that's it was just a little bit too much. So trying to simplify it. Uh, I like the attention to detail because essentially what they were trying to do was trying to find all of the uh, – the problem areas where things go off the rails and trying to tighten those up. Again, I liked it, but I think we need to simplify it for it to be a usable scenario. And last but not least, uh, Bizet, Minefield Madness. I love the concept. Uh, basically, both players need five objective tokens. The bombs are set on two on the neutral edges, and the bombs move. And you can score points by... Uh, basically, if you shoot the bomb and your enemy takes damage from it, you get points. Um, that part, I like the idea for scoring. I think 10 objects moving a turn sounds like a lot of used time for objective stuff. And I wonder if there was a way for us to do the same thing with fixed locations and you can still score the points the same way. But have the bombs out and like out in the wild already. I, I I wonder that that might save some time and actually make it so that you could score points in this thing. Oh, the other thing that there was a mechanic where the bombs would like if they went across the opposite side of the board, then they just disappear. The problem is in the in a whole scrum. As those things are moving, when they get all to the middle, it's going to be really hard to know which one was going which way. <laughs> That's one of the things I was testing, and I, and I had that problem. I was like, crap, which one? Oh, this is a problem. <laughs> so those were my honorable mentions that I wanted to shout out. I didn't get to everybody. If there, if you see me, if I put an emote underneath your, your thing, I looked at it. If I didn't mention you today at all, that's because you didn't follow the instructions somehow, but I still love you. Um, custom scenarios, friends. Which one was your favorite that we talked about today? I like Sammy's. Sammy's not the not at the satellite array. Yeah, yeah, the one with the with the four. Yeah. Uh, I was interested in uh, chasing down those droids. Uh, similar concept to what I was working on, but uh, uh, approached in a different way. I like Wills. There it is. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, real quick, Ryan, any changes or tweaks that have happened to your personal scenario? If you want to maybe give oh. somebody somebody a, a, a you want to give the people a reminder about what you've done. Uh, yeah, ambush at the hyperlane. Um, mm -hmm. Instead of using five objective tokens, it's three objective tokens and two hyperspace tokens, which actually interesting to see. Unless obviously, Dion, you vetted out a lot of them. Did did you see many people using hyperspace tokens in their submissions? Not one for the ones that I read used hyperspace ah. tokens. These people just gave up. Mine was too good. Uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, so I, I've I've stuck with so far. Um, Definitely opponents choosing the enemy the enemy ship from their list, from their opponent's list that has to come through the hyperspace. For now, it's a set turn, turn two, end phase turn two, so it'll actually be active turn three. Um, scoring still the same. Uh, it's uh, assault on salary style zone control scoring uh, for the objectives. 
Um, and then once a ship comes in from hyperspace, you gain half that ship's point cost to the owner of that ship. So they made it in the fight. One thing I did clear up is, if you recall, uh, towards the end of last week, there was P there was concerns of like, well, what if an enemy ship just parks itself on top of the hyperspace token um, and either blocks deployment partially or entirely? Um, in, uh, I, I kind of joked about, uh, well, it gets to hold a maneuver, but it gets to live and your ship gets to die as like the ultimate, like, don't be there. Yeah. I clean it up a bit to like be more realistic, but still pretty uh, don't do that level. Um, uh, the baseline one that isn't as bad because with medium and small base ships that are medium and large base ships that could come in, ships could still block where they would want to go uh -huh. uh, without being on the objective token so if that happens if a ship deploying from a hyperspace token would overlap another ship that does not overlap the hyperspace token resolve the final position as if solving a straight maneuver bump aligned with the hyperspace guide so you just take a straight five straight or whatever line it up as you would with the with a guide that it would be deploying out of uh -huh. from the hyperspace token and just bump up to the ship and just you resolve the final position as a bump, but don't resolve it as an actual, like, oh, you get a red action or whatever. Mm -hmm. Even though you probably wouldn't want to do that in the end phase anyway. Right. But if an enemy ship is overlapping the hyperspace token, a ship deploys, uh, when a ship deploys from a hyperspace token, the deploying ship can be placed anywhere at range zero to one of the hyperspace token, not overlapping the enemy ship. So oh. if you're if you're overlapping that hyperspace token, you're giving that ship coming in literally anywhere it wants to be placed. Right. That you go from three position to anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. That's <laughs> anywhere. Any orientation doesn't even need to have it to range zero to one. Like, <laughs> oh look, I'm flanking you really easily now. Yep. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Those are cool tweaks. So for mine, if you guys remember um, the refinery conflict, I have four Tabana gas pumps, and it's a it's a dog fight variant where if you're within range zero to one of the Tabana gases at the end of the uh, at the end of the end phase, or excuse me, at the yeah at the end of the end phase, uh, you receive a face up damage card, and at first that wasn't. Like, it's nasty. You don't want to be there. Um, but I realized that the bubble was too small. I need to push a little bit farther. So I added a strain mechanic to range 2. So if you're at range 2, you took a strain. Range 0 to 1 is a face-up damage card. But then I realized another issue. It's like, well, it never really mattered when it was testing it because people were like, I'll just do a blue maneuver, and it literally didn't matter. So now, very simple, it's two strain tokens. So at the at the end phase, if you're at range two of the Tabana gas pump, you are taking two strain tokens. If you're at range zero to one, you take a face-up damage card. And that is how I am encouraging you to fight because you don't want to be in those corners. It's a bad time. <laughs> so that's, uh, that is how I've gotten so far to... Um, to version 5, 1.5 of uh, the refinery conflict. Marcel, I saw you react like, oh, wow, whoa. I, I, I just probably got to watch because I, just what you were saying, like automatic face up cards. Are, uh huh. Like, like, what? You're giving me Elden Ring vibes. Have you been playing Elden Ring? I haven't. Like, I haven't. Just walk by and all of a sudden you get a crit. Like, you're just, that's right. Are you here? The, the bad. Bad stuff's happening. Like I have an additional mechanic what, I want to test. Is it just like in the corners? Uh, yes. Range one. Range one in the corners. One, one. In all four corners. It's bad time. Don't. You better fight. <laughs> or you're going to die. <laughs> yeah, it sounds that way. All righty. So um, I know some people were asking, can you guys give us some list a week? We are running late today. But do you guys have any shout outs before uh, before we call it for the night? I promise that we will try to get to list of the week next week. All right. I got a shout out uh, other than Wednesdays with me and James. Yes. Uh, is uh, the Kyber Cup uh, just started this week. Um 
uh, it's spearheaded by Hexiled Gaming. I'm sure there's a bunch of people that work on it, but mm -hmm. uh, that started up a league style. Um, should be very interesting. I'm flying first order. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, Pyre, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I was inspired by the uh, the Australian. Um, oh gosh, I'm blanking out now. I watched a, a couple games of it. Now I don't remember what it was called. <sighs> I'm not going to remember, am I? No one's okay. no one's helping me. Camino Cup. Is that what it was? I uh, I don't know. No, that was Singapore. Sorry. I will uh, come back and shout that out as well. Uh, I know the Fearless Gundarks are working on it, and uh, it it was apparently uh, very well received. Awesome. Now I have a I have a question. Do what will what do you think about once we get some of these custom scenarios tidied up? Trying these on Wednesday nights. Uh, I am in on that. I have a, uh, I have a couple ideas to spice up Wednesdays. Uh, I am going to be introducing uh, a, um, a uh, essentially like a title. Um, you want know, to come and defend your title? I'm going to be handing handing them out. Um, I think the, uh, the scenarios could be a good way to start introducing those. Uh, so yeah, oh, I'm, I'm in on trying them. I want to, uh, I want to say it's, uh, a couple people have been going, uh, back to September and playing second edition. I want to push the boundaries, Dion. I want to move forward. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, and, and, uh, it was the QLD Grand Championships. I don't remember what QLD. Queensland? Queensland? Yeah. QLD, I guess. But apparently, uh, very successful. And First Order had won, won it, which inspired me to create my own First Order list to try to compete in Kyber Cup with it. Awesome. All right, Ryan, you got any shout outs? Marcel? No, just uh, uh, sorry if I didn't seem like I was all there today. I probably wasn't. <laughs> My mind's. Uh, I took I took one of these today because it was really bothering me. So that that probably had me a little loopy. Mar Marcel's taking medication. That's all you guys need to know for anybody who can't. Yeah, see. you should clarify what he held up for the audience. <laughs> it, was <laughs> it was medicine. It was medicine. I'm taking like, one of these. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who yeah. knows what he could have held up? <laughs> oh, yeah, you got the, the audio listeners only. Yeah, like, yeah, we got those people like, too. Oh, oh Marcel's having fun. <laughs> Medicine, buddy. All right, all right. You good, Ryan? Yep, all good. All right. Oh, well, my son's five months old now. Today. Woo! Wow. Ow! Time flies, man. Yeah, so fast. Yep. Oh. It's uh, it's nuts. You'll, you'll blink. Arwen got her ears pierced this weekend. That's something she wanted to what? do. Yeah, something she she'd been asking for. We said you have to wait till you're six. And I said, are you sure? She's like, yeah, like a champ. She she she, she, she went ah ah, and that was it. Like that's it. Today she's like, oh, if it feels fine, Poppy. Okay. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she gonna get the big gauges now. She gonna start <laughs> gauging them out. I will tell you. I will tell you <laughs> that she told because my so Devin has like the normal ear piercing and the, and like one other one and one on top. She goes, "Mommy, mm. when can I get another one?" It's like literally the oh, next day. When can I get wow. another one? And and Devin was like, "Uh, uh." She looks at me and I'm like, as, "I don't know how to answer as, this question." As long as they're only on her ears, <laughs> no other piercings. <laughs> I think I think we said high school, high school, or when she's a teenager, no. she can get she can get another one. If, she, if she's got her own money, whatever. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, that was fun. Uh, there you go. Little little light, little look into life here at GSP Casa and and Ryan Casa. 
All right, everybody. Well, thanks for hanging out. I want to see you guys playing some custom scenarios. I want to see your thoughts. Feel free to play the scenarios that we have there. That's why we have the submission sections. And if we critique yours, let's get some edits, guys. Come on. If you're going to submit, let's work on them so we can make them even better. Or I'll just steal your ideas and make them better anyway. It worked for me, too. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be smart. Be safe. Gold Squadron.